Hey, hello, welcome. It's me, Barry Henderson. Welcome to Extraordinary Stories Podcast for a different kind of episode. In a second, I'll get to what this episode is and how it differs from the other episodes. First of all, hello, how are you? Are you good? Are you well? I hope you are, wherever you are in the world. The podcast seems to be getting a lot of love in uh, California, Australia and Japan. So that's nice. So hello to all of you. Uh, Thanks for listening. There's a good few UK listeners as well. So hi to anyone who's uh, listening and subscribing to the podcast. Thank you very much. So I want to say hello to and a shout out really to the Now That I'm Older podcast. Thank you for your shout out. That was really nice. And the support from hashtag pod and family on Twitter. It's nice to know that you're not sort of flying solo, that there's a community of people out there who are making independent podcasts and supporting each other, so that's really nice. So uh, yeah, if you need something great to listen to, get the Now That I'm Older podcast. It's, uh, yeah, it's really nice, it's really fun. So this is the first Extraordinary Stories podcast, Small Stories episode. This was suggested to me by a listener on email and I thought I'd give it a go. And basically what's going to happen is, it's stories, I'm going to tell you stories that I think are great, but they're much shorter and they're smaller than the stories that I tell on the other uh, podcasts. For each episode that I've done so far, I've done eight so far, I try and do as much research, as much reading, watching documentaries as I can. And I, I like to give the fullest version that I possibly can of any story. But with these episodes, it's a way for me to share a story in a briefer form um, that's just a slightly smaller story. So for each of these, I thought I would go by theme or subject. Um, If you've got a suggestion and you're listening and you'd like me to cover, I don't know, it can be any subject in the world, anything you think of, um, yeah, let me know. Let me know what little stories you would like me to cover. I'll kick off this one, and the first subject is sex. So, as Salt and Pepper said in the 1980s, let's talk about sex. Okay, let's go. The four people you need to know about in this story are Christopher Membreno, the woman, now I'm not just calling her the woman, that's uh, that's how it's reported in the news because her name has never actually been given, which is a good thing, it's there to protect her. Another person called Jack Doherty and Manos Economodemus. So, how the three people who are the woman, Jack Doherty, and Economodemus, how they became involved in a threesome isn't very clear. I mean, I guess I'd say maybe a Tinder hookup, maybe another sex act. I I don't really know how they all got together. But um, anyway, so the three of those decided to get together and have themselves a threesome. Good for them. Fun. Uh, Yep. Explore your explore your sex side. Doesn't always need to be two people in a sex situation. Good. So the story goes like this. In Economodemus's house, the three of them are having sex and it's reported that one of the men pulls out a camera and decides he wants to film the sex. Now, the woman's not happy at this and she says at this point, I want to leave. So that's fine. Jack Doherty drives the woman back to her Staten Island home, leaving Economodemus alone. Now it's believed that what happened next was that the woman contacted her boyfriend. Now her boyfriend wasn't involved in this threesome. Her boyfriend was somewhere else. She calls him and she says that she's been raped. Her boyfriend was Christopher Membrino. Now the next weird bit of the story is that Economodemus's girlfriend, she wasn't involved in the sex either. She's somewhere else entirely. She receives an Instagram message that says, your boyfriend fucked up 
and it will be taken care of. So Jack Doherty, having dropped the woman home when she asked to be taken home, arrives back at the apartment that they were having sex in originally, and also at the same time he arrives, three other men arrive with revenge on their minds. So she said she's been raped, and now these guys suddenly appear at Economodemus' house. So surveillance cameras capture two white men and a black man chasing Economodemus with a baseball bat, and he tries to leave the building. Um, unfortunately, he is beaten with baseball bats, and he's stabbed. So bleeding from his wounds, he staggers out of his apartment, and he knocks on the door of a neighbour, Joy Laguara. He collapses, leaving bloody handprints all over her door and inside her hallway. She says he was gushing blood everywhere. She says, I saw the blood. I got him onto my couch and the blood was everywhere. That's when I told him, God, honey, you are bleeding and you need help now. Economodemesis replied, they stabbed me. They stabbed me twice. They stabbed me. He then said, they hit me in the head, they hit me in the head with a bat. Now, Economodemesis asked the neighbour not to call 911, but she decided that this was probably a good thing to do. He was asking her, please don't call 911, I'll be fine. And she knew he wasn't fine at this point. Of course not, he was fucking stabbed and his fucking body was beaten up with baseball bats. Uh... The last words he said to her were, I am so sorry. What a horrible, fucking horrible experience for her. Like, I lived in blocks of flats for years and years and years. And you, sometimes you know your neighbours, sometimes you don't know your neighbours. You know, you know. sometimes you just pass them. It's hello, oh, good morning, oh, hi, yeah, whatever. But, um, yeah, I don't... I've had a few weird experiences happen living in, in flats certainly never had the experience where someone has come to my door having been stabbed and hit with baseball baseball bats. That's a whole other fucking level. So eventually she did call 911, but Economidus died at New York Methodist Hospital in Brooklyn at 4.33 a.m. Residents in the building had to hop over a blood-stained rug that was in the hallway. So... Jack Doherty, now he's the guy that drove the woman home when she said she wanted to go, said, I didn't do enough, I didn't save him. I feel so guilty and I don't know why I did try. He's just a baby. Economodemesis had a girlfriend and she arrived at the crime scene not long after the killing and said, oh my God, no, my baby, it can't be fucking real. Police, New York police, arrested Christopher Membrino, who is 24 years old. So, he has been arrested and is charged with the murder of Manos Ecodemus. So, lots of people involved in this story had partners outside of this threesome. I don't know. I I think I said earlier on, uh, could have been a Tinder thing. Could have been, a, I don't know, just another sex app. Possibly they knew each other, possibly they wanted to, I don't know, maybe they're part of a network of people who just like, like to fuck about, like to, yeah, mix up, change up their sexual situations. No judging, I think that's absolutely fine if that's how you, if that's how you want to do it. My ideas on sex are pretty liberal, so yeah, if that's your, if that's your thing, go for it. It is a fucking tragic story, however, it's absolutely tragic that this guy has died, really young and just... You know, wanted a threesome one night and fucking ended up dead the next morning. So, I hate the tone that this gets reported in. I've watched loads of wee news clips about it. I, I, it really does my head in this whole idea. Like, oh, it's it's a real sexual deviant thing. It, like, it's really taboo to want a threesome. It really isn't. Your sex life is your own. If you want a threesome, fucking do it. Do you know what I mean? Shag whoever you want. Like, there's no, yeah, I just there just shouldn't be judgment. It's, it's terrible that someone has died um, as a result of this, but fuck, don't, yeah, 
just don't report it in a tone that's like they were sleazy or they were like yeah like deviant or devious they weren't they were just fucking having sex and something went wrong um okay so the next couple they're really short little stories but um yeah but i thought they were interesting so in 2009 an elderly man of about 80 years old a croatian man was living in new york and he was looking for some action one night and he goes into a bar known to have um sex workers in the bar and he finds himself a sex worker he finds himself a lady that he likes and she tells him this is the rate this is what i charge which is absolutely the right thing to do if i can yeah i think sex workers absolutely yeah have to just say this is my rate and if you want me this is what you will pay But this guy was not happy with the prices. He did not like what he was being offered. And so he bargained and he bargained and he bargained with her. And eventually he got down to just $6.50 for a blowjob. So she accepted this. And quite reluctantly, she went back to his house. Now he starts to undress. I'm sure she's fucking thrilled at this moment of an 80-year-old Croatian man undressing in front of her and just as the sex act is about to begin he suffers a heart attack he hits the floor and he dies and the sex worker is left to call the police (laughs) fuck that is a rough night for her that is a horrible night imagine that i'm all fucking hell imagine having to phone police and be like i'm real sorry i've got this um 80 year old croatian man in front of me and he is dead i was about to give him a blowjob and now he's dead horrible number two is a escort who um so i did some research into escort stories uh what might be the you know male gigolos what's your weirdest stories and i found these ones i just found them really touching yeah they're really yeah just i think they're really nice so there's a male escort who says the following i've had quite a few very strange experiences and at times degrading and as a male escort i've only had two experiences in my life which weren't degrading or weren't focused on orgasm the first was a very beautiful asian lady probably 50 years old i went to her house and i explained in person the services that she could choose from she said she wanted to start by being held in a gentle hug. After about a minute, I felt her crying into my chest. I just held her and she stood there crying for five more minutes. Eventually, I picked her up. I sat her down on the couch and she cried for another 20 minutes into my chest. Deep sobs. I asked her if she was okay and she told me her husband never holds her this way and he never has so i squeezed her a bit tighter and we sat there until the time was up 45 minutes is what she'd paid for and she'd cried for the whole of that time i think there's something so moving about that i think there's something so lovely about that i think there's a um Oh, it's not coming back to me now, but I feel like there's a fact about human contact or something, isn't there? Like, we, as a human being, you need a certain level or a certain amount of physical contact in your life. Yeah, there's something, there's something in that area. I know it's to do with, like, receptors in your brain and all those things and what actually human, what actual contact with another human being does to your system. I think it's healthy. I think it yeah i think i think it has a massive effect on you Um, he also says the second story which is it's kind of similar well it's a bit different but yeah i really like this he's hired by a woman in her mid-30s and all that she wants is to slow dance this woman has never been asked to slow dance by anyone in her life and so for 90 minutes they just slow dance He says, it was pretty amazing, to be honest. He then says, both of these were strange. But even more than that, they were truly intimate. Most of what I do feels like masturbation 
with another person. It's very impersonal. I've now pretty much focused the work I do on trying to have some kind of intimate connection. Lovely. I think if you can connect with a human being, do it. I think if you have the fucking opportunity to get close to someone, get physical, connect with them. Okay, number three, and the final story here, number three is the story of Joanne Kitchen. Now, Joanne Kitchen is living with her boyfriend of many, many years called Gary Higgs. So Joanne and Gary, they're fucking in their living room and Joanne screams, harder, harder, Chris, harder. Hmm. However, her boyfriend, as I just mentioned, was called Greg. So, not happy, not happy. Greg, at hearing her say, harder, harder, Chris, harder. He gets up fast, he goes to the kitchen, he grabs a large knife and he stabs her twice. However, she doesn't die from the stab wound, so what he does is, oh, horrific, he takes the phone cord, the the cord on the phone and he wraps it around her throat until she's dead. He's now in prison for life. I mean, that is a fucking nightmare situation. That's an absolute nightmare. There's one of two things there. Either he's just really infuriated by the thought that his girlfriend was fucking someone else. Or is there possibly a history of problems between them? Is there something wrong mental health wise with him, with her? I don't know. I mean, I'm speculating here. I'm obviously... I'm just guessing. Yeah, fuck's sake. So, so there you go. <laughs> so there's there's the, the first Small Stories episode uh, focusing on sex. So if you have an idea for the next Small Stories theme or subject, it can be anything and everything. If you want to get in touch with me, you can. On Twitter, it's at Extra Stories Pod. If you want to get in touch on instagram or facebook it's extraordinary stories podcast if you want to email me it's extraordinary stories podcast at gmail.com okay so hopefully in the next few days i'll have the next fuller more uh, extended episode up i'm currently just researching a story at the moment i just want to get it right just want to make sure i'm telling it correctly but yeah this has been a lot of fun to do these wee mini ones so thanks very much for listening Um, And as I always say, if you have a great story, if you know an extraordinary story, let me know. Okay, goodbye. It didn't didn't affect me really one way or the other. I would imagine from the look on his face. Let's get it on. Let's do it. Let's get it over.
Let's get it on. Let's do it. Let's get it over.